Let's talk about what's going on in training camp. Trey Lance has thrown a pick three days in a row. Um, two to a safety, two to safeties, one to linebackers over the middle stuff. Uh, not seeing cover stuff, staring down receiver. Today, though, he had four big time throws down the field. I mean, to me, I'm not concerned about Trey Lance. I mean, what the way I would put it is I'm still a hundred percent confident that he's the best quarterback on the team better than Jimmy. They still upgraded at, at quarterback. If Jimmy was here, he'd be doing I've seen Jimmy do this stuff over and over and over again. So Trey, he'll he will he's had throw, he's gonna have to learn how to not hit safeties and linebackers over the middle because there's a lot of passes over the middle in this offense. But he's also you see him creating off script. It's not there. He steps up and through scrambles uh, or or throws. That's not it. That was never in the offense before. And the downfield throws. I really think that even though there's going to be um, inconsistency, he's a step up. I don't know if he'll be worth the trade, but I do think the Niners upgraded at quarterback. I don't know if they upgraded at left guard and center. They may have, maybe, but they upgraded at quarterback. That's why I'm, I'm not concerned about trade at this time. Yeah, I'm, I'm not concerned either. Um, I don't think it's fair to evaluate a quarterback. I mean, at least give him – let's give him half a season before we see where he's at. Now, if he was out there just completely awful, looked like he's not an NFL quarterback, that's one thing. But uh, he obviously does. We've seen what he can do in games. Let's give him half the season, then we can kind of evaluate. I don't even think half a season is enough to really see where Trey Lance is going to be. But I think halfway through the season, we'll kind of have a, a little bit of a feel for, for who the guy is. Uh, and you really can't judge rookies that until after you know their second or third season, in all honesty. So we got a long way to go before we write him off. Um, I thought it was hilarious what uh, Colin Cowherd uh, has been doing. And, and I know he, he shouted you out on, uh, on Twitter. Um, you know, what I thought was funny is he called you uh, Trey Lance's biggest defender. You know, and I've been watching you for a long time. I, I really don't remember seeing you defend Trey Lance at all. It was really just about – you know, telling the Niners that it's time to move on from, from Jimmy Garoppolo. That's the way I looked at it. I, I, the furthest I've ever gone is to say that he's the best quarterback on the team and was last year. That's not saying that he's Patrick Mahomes or that he's going to be a pro bowler this year. I'm not sure. And I'm not sure that moving up to number three was the right move. I'm not sure it wasn't though. We'll see. Um, but I'm. let me just be real clear. When Cowherd talks about Trey, it's always about his accuracy and his arm fitness, basically his arm his strength, his, all of it. I'm not concerned about his arm. He misses throws sometimes, but today he was eight of 15 with two drops. That's 10 of 15. That's very accurate. To me, he's essentially accurate enough, maybe even more than that. The issue is so far in camp is the picks. Yeah. He didn't do this in college. And part of what he's supposed to do is not do this now. And Bosa just put it out there. As long as he doesn't do this, he should be fine. I guess. Let's see if he learns from it. Jimmy never did. And there's another thing I want to point out. Maybe this is a symptom of Kyle Shanahan's offenses. We always put it on Jimmy. But if you go back and look through the 15 years of Kyle calling plays, his offenses tend to rank rank high in interception percentage. Maybe it's a function of his scheme. I don't know. Well, you know, I also wonder, you know, you touched on it. There's no pads. We'll see more on Monday um, how everybody's looking because it's a lot easier to block when you can get yes. up under somebody's pads. Yeah. Um, so that's a that's a big thing. Hopefully we'll get Debo back. You know, the other thing is it is training camp. So there's a huge possibility that Trey Lance is being told to push it, see what you can do. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no wins or losses here. It's not going on your record. Um, it's, it's, it's practice. So we don't know. You know, maybe he's pushing it, trying to see what his capabilities are. Um, there's a lot to still be discovered yet. I'm, I'm not worried in the least. Yeah. I mean, I think it's he's so green. He has to learn what to do and what not to do. But Kyle also has to learn what to call and what not to call and how to feature his strengths. He figured that out with Jimmy eventually. And yeah. I think with Trey, what I see is he's really, really good at throwing outside the numbers and down the field. Really good at it. Confident, wants to do it. Kyle knows that. It's going to be a big part of the offense. Debo's not here right now. So they're focusing a lot on the stuff over the middle, the stuff that Jimmy's good at, the 15-yard in route, uh, the slants, the, uh, the the seam stuff, and that's where he's getting intercepted. The throws over the middle. We always knew that was going to be the toughest stuff for Trey Lance because that requires timing, touch, anticipation, all that stuff. Sometimes he does it well. Sometimes he doesn't. He'll get a, a month to practice on it, and if he improves, it'll be a, a big part of the offense. If not, they're not going to call it. All right. So, I and mean, it, Kyle's figuring it out. I think if he's good, and I think he is, he'll be he'll be able to – 
work around this stuff in the regular season? Yeah, you know, that's going to take time. Just like it's going to take time for Trey Lance to adjust to the NFL and being a starter and all that good stuff. It's going to take Kyle some time to adjust to calling plays for Trey Lance. So there's still a lot of growth to, to take place. I mean, hopefully they can start off quick. If they don't go 2-0, the um, season is going to be a little – I mean, those first two games are very important. So hopefully they can figure stuff out enough to, to win those first two games this year. Um, and then as they go uh, progress and, and get better, um, that's kind of my my hope is that they start off 2-0 and because if they lose those two games, their schedule just gets tougher from there. Here's why I put Lance in the good section, not the not-so-good section today, despite throwing an interception. Interceptions are are bad, but he was they didn't put him in the red zone. He couldn't offset it with touchdowns. He offset it with big plays. He had a throw to uh, Kittle, who was running stride for stride with Moore. He wasn't really open. Threw it with touch over his shoulder, hit him. I mean, there was like no window for it. Great throw. Then there was Ayuk running a corner route against Traverius Ward. Not a big window there. Uh, Lance threw the ball before Ward made his break. He was 25 yards down the field and hit him right at the sideline. I mean, there was no window for it. He makes really nice downfield throws for a guy with accuracy issues. I mean, it's not like Jimmy missing Kyle Juszczyk in Tennessee. He makes some throws where you're like, whoa, what an arm. There's still 45 yards in the air. Is that accurate? Or is it sounds right. I mean, it's hard to judge it, but it's, it, it was a wow. Yeah, and hopefully they'll put it out on Instagram later or whatever so you can see it. Do you remember Jimmy making? I'm trying to think of Jimmy's ever he hit 45 yards. Throw, not even in practice. It's just yeah. a constant stream of 5, 10, 15-yard throws all the time. Good for him. But, I mean, the, the, the book is out tired of that yeah. <laughs> anyway it's fun to watch trey lance come to practice and do this stuff it's not like he's trying to just get by he's right. attempting very difficult throws yeah he's making a lot of them so i'm not concerned right yeah i'm not concerned at all either the jedi says why is everyone surprised the first year starter is having ups and downs how is this news we predicted these issues uh when they didn't start him last year true yeah. true jacqueline knox thank you one dollar appreciate you um, she says Trey is doing okay to be a rookie. We got to give him time. I thought today was his best day. He hasn't had a lights out. I'm a Hall of Famer day, but I don't think we're going to expect that anytime soon. Yeah, and the pass rush, from my understanding, has been really, really good. And again, this whole eleven on eleven with no pads is kind of a joke. It's so heavily slanted towards the defense. If you think about it, it's hard to block someone, let alone maintain the block. You can't grab anything. So, like, play action, that's not going to work. Everyone is in the backfield by the time the quarterback turns around. That's going to change when the pads goes on. Let's see how he does. I mean, these kids in high school, they do these seven-on-seven AAU things. They never do 11-on-11. It's kind of – the only time you see 11-on-11 no pads is in the NFL training camp. And it's like in the past, it used to be like a day or two, and then pads went on. Now it's four or five days because they're all just like, let's not get hurt. And I get it. But I mean, this is the kind of stuff that your this is what your offense looks like during that yeah. time. And again, when, when Trey was playing really well in minicamp and OTAs, it was about 50 50, 11 on 11s and seven on sevens. And he was lights out in seven on sevens, mm -hmm. which is, you know, of course, there's no pass rush. There's also no scrambling. Uh, there's no play action. There's no moving out of the pocket. So it has its own set of difficulties.